Welcome back, everybody, to a game of thrones. I was not content to leave this mod by the wayside after the after the last series sort of fell apart. The the save game broke me up. We have millions and millions of gold. You know the drill. So this time around, I've come up with what I think will be quite a unique scenario for us. Now, unlike the Bloodstone Emperor, whose whole campaign concept was based on a single line from a Game of Thrones world book that was published, this one has history, backstory, relevance, and hopefully some unique mechanics with one of the official Game of Thrones mod submods. So this is going to be very, very different to anything you've seen before. We are still in a world of magic. We are in a world long before the Iron Throne and even before the Doom of Valyria. So this is going to be hopefully a fairly unique scenario. Not only that, but I've basically spent all night cooking up some real spicy mods for this one as well, which is hopefully going to maximize the role-playing and the character building and the personality side of things. Very similar to the Joris Bonson playthrough, but with, with, with some extra stuff layered on top of that. So, my friends, welcome to... And there it is, the Cursed Save game itself. You might notice that things are slightly different here. So we are playing with the Andal Invasion official Game of Thrones sub mod, as official as it can get, I guess. Which is, as I said before, before the Seven Kingdoms of Form, before just at the uh, well, the, the book mod we're going to be playing is a little bit later into the Andal Invasion. You can play with the Scouring of Lorath, which is the very, very start of the Andal Invasion. Back when Westeros was still, as you can see, their first man, Craddock Man, there, which is obviously a type of uh, type of first man, and still worshipped the the old gods as well, which I think is uh, going to be a very interesting concept. So, if you want to play this for yourself, if you want to play this bookmark, I'd highly recommend the Scouring of Lorath. If you want to play the first ever Andal invader of of Westeros, so that it's uh, Corwin of House Corbray there, a man who invaded the Vale there, as you can see, eventually defeated by the, the Bronze Kings, I believe, of House Royce. Now, we're not going to be doing that, because that is, of course, how Westeros' history actually went. The Andals landed, the Andals spread through Westeros, they brought the Faith of the Seven, they brought Knighthoods and Septons, and all that stuff to Westeros. I'm thinking, how about we play it from the opposite perspective? How about we play as a house that was made extinct by the Andal Kings, by a house that was a defender of the old gods and fought down to the last man before they went extinct, and a house with, with prestige that was essentially lost to history itself. We're going to go down to the actual last bookmark in this particular sub -mod. We're going to go for Light of the Seven, and over here on the very far corner of the, of the Riverlands, by, by the Twins, by the crossing where Ward of Frey is from, there is the province of Seagard. Now, normally, this character would not exist. Like I said, I, I sort of cooked up this concept. We are going to be playing as Lord Emmon Mud. Now, House Mud, as I said, were the sort of uh, defenders of the Old Faith to some extent. One of the members of House Mud, I think it was Tristan or Tristopher the Fourth, one name or the other, was a, 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 a an extremely powerful member of House Mud. He had a, a unique nickname that I can't remember off the top of my head now, but it's it's said that according to the, the Game of Thrones mythology, that it took seven Andal kings to finally defeat this man. They had an empire that spread across the Riverlands, and I thought this guy would be the perfect defender of the old gods. We're going to try and repel the Andal invasion. We're going to try and stop it before it starts and keep the faith of the old gods strong. Along with that, of course, if we take a look over here, you've still got the Valyrian Freehold, so that means we should see some interesting things crop up in Essos as well. You've still got the Roinar before they headed over to Dawn, so Dawn is still, of course, first man as well. We're at the cusp of essentially a, a, a religious uprising, so it's down to us whether or not we want to we wanna try and stamp things out. And there are also unique game mechanics added by the devs to this particular scenario, along with some other stuff that I've cooked up myself. Now, alongside the unique mechanics that were designed specifically for this scenario to do with assimilation and religious uprising and things, we have my community traits mod, which we have uh, altered quite significantly here and actually made fully compatible with the Game of Thrones, but a lot of people reported crashes to desktops, things like that with it, um, and, and the sort of workaround left you with kind of half an experience. So I've merged that. I've made that fully compatible. So if you guys want to play with the community traits mod uh, alongside the Game of Thrones, you know, the mod that adds, um, the mod that I came up with that adds uh, sort of prodigy and, and strong variations, tall and, and voices or whatever else. See, all those additional traits. You can actually use it with the Game of Thrones mod now fully. So of course we've got that enabled. And I've cooked up some other roleplay related stuff, as I said before, which I will show you guys very, very shortly. But let's, 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 meet, our, let's meet our man here. We've got Lord Emmon of Seaguard, a 
Skilled Commander, a strong man and a trained fighter. Now, he is semi-random. The traits Skilled Commander, strong and trained fighter are set. Those are always going to be if you load in as this character. However, proud, family person, slothful, and deceitful were the completely random traits in this scenario. He is a bastard of his dynasty, otherwise he would have been killed, as with the rest of the MUDs. He does start as Faith of the Seven, so we've got here the option to return to the old ways. To survive, you had to pledge yourself to the false and all gods, throw off the foreign gods, and return to the ways of the first men. If we're feeling confident, we can flip back to the uh, to the original religion of the first men, of course, the old gods there. Now, as you can see, you can you can kind of get an impression for how far the faith of the spread the, the faith of the spread the faith of the seven has started to spread. So all of the mountain and the veil have converted over to the faith of the seven. The riverlands is of course starting to convert. So if we convert now, it could be fairly dangerous there and uh some of the stormlands start to pick up as well i've just got tarth there up through towards dragonstone which is still under control of valyria so where do we want to start wow this is a it's an absolutely incredible question now I'll, I'll show you some of the unique mechanics that i've added uh before we really dive into things here oh my god we start with the claim on the kingdom of the hills and the rivers that's fantastic and this was of course the uh the, the kingdom the the empire at the height of house mud speaking of which we should probably check through our dynasty somewhat so we've got and this was the guy i was talking about here King Christopher, our grandfather, uh, King Christopher IV, the Hammer of Justice. So this was the guy that supposedly took seven different Andal kings to bring down in combat. He's got the Mud Bloodline there, founded by... Mud Bloodline? Oh, God. Thanks, Hermione. Very cool. Founded by King Tristan there, the first of House Mud. Obviously not the first of House Mud if he's King Tristan the second, but as far back as the... The, the mod's history will go, but this guy is the important one. This is this is the sort of the mighty warrior, quick, strong, brilliant commander. 41 fucking marshal. Good God. And there he's got all his little bonuses as well. So you've got a bunch of bonuses to personal combat, marshal, uh, other sort of good stuff going on there. Now we, as a bastard of the dynasty, not only don't have the blood... The, the, the mud bloodline, but right now the, the blood of the Hammer of Justice is also inactive because we are neither brave nor do we publicly follow the old god's religion. So if we want to claim that bonus, we're going to have to flip ourselves back there. So let me show you some of the features, like I said, some of the gameplay mechanics just before we really get stuck into the natural playthrough. So first things first, I've sort of added in, for those of you guys that saw the Perfectly Normal Man series... Not so long ago, I've I've brought back the concept of your focuses being based on your personality. I thought this would really help with the roleplay focuses. The reason I, I sort of came up with this mod concept in the first place was that every CK2 playthrough we go, we've always ended up with a an ambitious, brave, diligent, temperate, genius man who was great at everything and completely infallible. All, all women, obviously, completely infallible. We always ended up with what was essentially the same character because, of course, in CK2, it's fairly easy to min-max. So I've wanted to put some limitations on what we can actually do here. So say, for example, as you can see, the business focus you can only take if you're greedy, proud, diligent, ambitious, or ruthless. The rulership focus you can't take if you are a tyrannical ruler, if you're arbitrary, a lunatic, cruel, or ruthless. I wonder if there are any we actually can't take. So there you go, the seduction focus we can't take because you have to be lustful, hedonist, or gregarious. The reason I've done this, I've specifically picked the what I would consider the more overpowered of the focuses. So seduction, business, and scholarship. And I've tried to limit those ones down quite heavily. Whereas you find things like family focus are not particularly limited. Because I think it's fair that most characters would be interested in their family. Most characters would be interested in their religion. Particularly in the time about dynasty building and religious upheaval. That just made the most sense to me. They do still have limitations though. So a selfish kinslayer can't take the family focus for hopefully obvious reasons. Uh, a character who is shy or temperate wouldn't take carousing. Similarly, cravens wouldn't take hunting or war. Then you've got seduction. You can't take it and like I said unless you are lustful, hedonist or gregarious. So we've got some natural limitations on the gameplay there. There's also some limitations on educating children that you'll see as we go along here. That mod took me a little bit of a while to cook up, so hopefully we'll see that in a second. First things first, my god, Justin Bieber, let's change this haircut straight away. There we go. That's looking, that's looking a little bit more respectable there, Lord Emmon. We're 36. We're the last one member of our dynasty. We are also not legitimized, but as an independent ruler, we can... Legitimize ourselves. We're the last surviving member of House Mud. Who the hell's going to argue with us when we control Seaguard? Now, the traditional capital of House Mud is our old stones. So, I think the first thing we need to do is absolutely take back our sort of ancestral home from these guys. And, of course, if you played the base game, uh, the base game, the base game of Thrones mod, Old Stones is ruined at that stage. And one of the events is that you can, you can sort of go there, restore it. You find the old House Mud crown. You get some claims with it, that type of thing as well. Hopefully, that's still in this. 
Now, as for the scenario, the unique, the unique uh, mechanics of this scenario, you can see we've got options to subdue the Andals. Though the tide may seem unstoppable, the Andals can be stopped if properly subdued and conquered. That's going to be our goal for this campaign, quite obviously, is, is keep the first men alive. Keep that culture alive. Keep the old gods alive throughout Westeros as well, rather than the Faith of the Seven. Then we've also got expel the Andals. With the leadership removed, the Andals can be expelled from your lands. If that is is possible, if the top liege, you have to not be uh, their religion or their culture, something along those lines. So, first things first then. Return to the old ways, I think, is absolutely the first thing we want to do here as a member of House Mud. Gives us access to crafting weirwoods, because of course we will worship the old gods now. Uh, I believe it removes the opportunity to hold tournaments. Oh no, we can still have tournaments. That's kind of cool. I guess it would be... Oh no, we can still hold tournaments. Why can we do that? Um... I guess you can just do it if you're a Westerosi lord. I thought that the northern equivalent was the melee, but of course that that's... Uh, oh, sorry, the old god's equivalent was the melee. Apparently we can do both. Hey, that's kind of cool. Okay. Let's expel the Andals. So you, the one thing you might notice as well is is settlements or, or, or uh, provinces, sorry, will have this Andal Settlers modifier on it. So revolt risk is increased because of the cultural differences. You get higher tax, higher level size. We can expel them. What will that do for us? If we leave them too long, will we just convert over to Andal and not have a choice in it? I guess we should expel them in that case. Commissioner Spulker, obviously there are runestones there, and then your basic sort of Game of Thrones stuff. Show me the dragons. I think if we click this button, it's going to be, uh, yep, there we go. There's a whole bunch of them, because of course, this is before Valyria blew up. The Valyrian Freehold is still fully in power here, so we got Archon Vakar of Valyria, of House uh, Varesis there, so obviously got the blood of the dragon, probably has some really fancy artifacts, dragon horns, and Valyrian steel armor, and weapons, and dragon bone swords, this is, a uh, this is gonna be a hell of a treasure trove over here, what's going on there? Oh, right, because uh, this is after Valyria have destroyed Slaver's Bay, this is the war between the dragon and the harpy, Valyria obviously won, so they've taken control of Astapor, Yunkai, Marine, they've still got Isaria, the lost free city there, under their control, along with Kohor and Norvos as well, this is before Bravos was founded, so Bravos was a uh, was a secret city for obviously a long time, built by the escaped slaves of Valeria. So that now doesn't exist. I assume it's a ruin. That's very cool. I was going to assume it would just be some random dude, but no, it's actually completely a ruin there. And this is all held by uh, Andals, obviously before they were swallowed up before this became Bravos and whatever else. And look at that, Valeria has control of uh, what's that? Pentos, Mir, Tyrosh, and Lys as well. That's kind of cool. And then you've got your like I sort of alluded to earlier. You've got your Roinar characters. Nice. That's the scenario, basically. Hopefully I've explained everything. If anything else is confusing, leave a comment and I'll, I'll, I'll have to reply to that, I guess, instead. We are at a very, very vulnerable situation, especially now that we've flipped religion because we are the last surviving member of our dynasty. We've got the Iron Islands immediately to our right under House Hall right now. So House Hall were the characters who built, uh, they built Harren Hall. I think we've actually did a playthrough of House Hall, didn't we? The, the, was that the second playthrough I ever did on the channel? The Gilded... Guild of Republic. Might be. You'd have to go back all the third uh, series or something like that. Old Ironborn, so a lot of the cultures are also different. What is that? Backwards culture, so troops are less effective. Fair enough. I guess they haven't got the military, the sort of military discipline or the the Andals bought steel, essentially, and all that technology to Westeros. So I imagine that's also part of it. Go on, Lannis Adventures can raid in for now, Davis. Besides that, they're still very scary because they could raid us immediately and we are obviously very, very close. Very nice. Uh, what can we do? Can we raid? Um, cannot take lovers as concubines, very weird. As a traditional sla anti-slavery culture, more resistant to the effects of severe winter, backwards culture as well. Is that true of Andals? Because if so, this is going to be a really, really difficult playthrough. Um, oh wow, they get the bonuses to troops then. Like I said, they've got the better equipment, they've got the better gear, they've got the better military, uh, discipline, I guess is the right word for it. Shit, this is going to be a hard playthrough, wow. So not only are we outnumbered, but they're stronger than us, they have more troops than us, they're more numerous than us, they can assimilate our provinces from the inside. God, this could be a problem. What's the moral authority of the old gods right now? Five. So I guess one other goal for this campaign, then, not only is to kick out the Andals, but one thing that might help bring that about would be to reform and actually make a scripture for the old gods so that they don't get wiped out as they sort of... Well, they didn't really get wiped out, I guess, in... Uh, in A Song of Ice, Fire, and A Game of Thrones or anything like that. But of course, they reduced only to the north and then obviously beyond the wall. This is going to be tricky. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be very, very difficult. The first thing we need to do is make sure this dynasty isn't wiped out. Let's find ourselves a good waifu, if you don't mind. Let's go for Prodigy to start off with. I'm going to go for the eugenics game, obviously, because we've got limitations on childhood education, our own focuses. We're very limited in where we can expand to, obviously, religious-wise as well, cultural-wise. Let's not put any more limitations on ourselves and say, oh, we've got to marry, got to marry for love. She's good. Wow. Um, Prodigy and 
yeah, we have my own uh, education mod changes as well there. So it, it's designed to make it so that you have specific play styles. Steward, as you can see, gives tax bonuses along with the other stuff. Uh, if we go over, let me just reset this to well. Sorry, I should probably point this out because this actually isn't part of the traits mod or anything either. Eminence, Grey Eminence, for example, a diplomacy education will give you uh, natural revolt risk, general opinion. You've got things like Marshall will give bonuses. Oh my god, that's a lot of dragons. Marshall will give bonuses to uh, army morale, every reinforcement rate, personal combat. You sort of get the gist of things then, of course. Uh, intrigue gives a bonus to plot power, arrest chance. Just to make characters, if you do go into those areas, because we have a, a little less control over education, or more specifically the personality of the kids that will end up with their education, then the education needs to be a bit more impactful, if that makes sense. So we want to find that woman again, because she was incredible. I wish I had a match for special interest. Where have you gone? Uh, let's, let's load that filter in again. There she is. All right, let's invite her to court, because she's absolutely fantastic. Not only does brilliant steward obviously give that fertility bonus still, because this is based on the base game traits. She's a prodigy. Plus six to everything. That will be a fantastic start. So we are... We're also strong. If we play our cards right here, our next generation could be very, very strong. Hello? Is she, she going to turn up? Takes about a week. She should be at any second now. Kind of scared to turn the speed up because this is also, for whatever reason, compared to the regular Game of Thrones mod, much, much faster. Like, insanely fast in terms of the actual game speed. So, we've got to be very careful about how fast we want this to roll. Right, so, Emmon is going to marry her. We're going to lose 400 prestige straight off the bat. Fan-fucking-tastic. Can we have a wedding feast? Uh, does it take a little while to kick in? No, it seems fine. Can we have the wedding feast? Though? Ah, there we are. Host a wedding feast for Lord Emmon. So it's 20 gold, but as I recall, this actually gives a guaranteed chance of of the of the of them having a kid, of her becoming pregnant. So we should definitely go for that one as soon as possible. Vassal opinion plus 10 revolt risk is completely irrelevant. Is it worth the 20 gold to roll the dice on maybe getting an heir? Yeah, I think it is, especially when we've only got 1%. Sorry, Lord Emin. Oh, rest mark. Right, because we need to legitimize ourselves. Shit, I was going to say, what the hell happened to our house? Um, request legitimization. At which point we can petition our liege to be legitimized. Spoilers, we are our liege, so we can just legitimize ourselves. There we go. So we're now an official member of House Mob, which I believe gives us the other bloodline. There you go. So you can see because this one is colored and it's active, because this one is not, it's it's not active. Obviously, we need to trade Brave before we can claim to carry the blood of the Hammer of Justice. I didn't think that was... Uh, I, I thought there needed to be some extra restriction on that, but we have the, 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 the Mud bloodline. Grants traditional claim on the Kingdom of the Rivers and the Hills. Andal Opinion, minus 10. Don't really get on with House Mud, given that this guy was a real thorn in their side. But the First Men and the Rivermen get a very small opinion bonus. Not, not so much that it would impact the playthrough. Cool. Good start. Right. I think we need to go for Family Focus. And we can't take Sinatra, can we? No, we'll go for Family Focus in that case. Try and get this babby, just in case the Wedding Feast doesn't do what I think it did. Have a Son. Does that increase fertility? I think there's an, uh, 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 an invisible fertility bonus associated with that. So we'll roll with that one for the timing. Right. So this is the other thing as well. Other... First men rulers are going to petition us. Please, for the love of God, help us out. We're being wiped out by... Whoa, what? Whoa, he's at war with another first man. Why do I care then? Who are you? Coalition against our common enemy? He's not my common enemy. Did he just convert back or something? I mean, he is a house gardener who were first men. They were the sort of progenitors of a lot of different houses in the reach. Like house Hightower, House Tyrell, people like that. that all descended from or claimed to descend from House Gardener. Okay, um, I'm going to say no, we're not going to get involved because I don't know who you are. And if you were defending against Andals, I might be tempted. No, why are they petitioning us like this? Is there any... Oh, probably because they're the same religion, same culture, perhaps? I don't know why they can keep petitioning us like this. That's going to get quite annoying if everybody in the fucking realm says, hey... Do you want to join my war? Because I'm, I'm absolutely not going to do it. Okay. Um, the best part about holding a wedding is hosting. Uh, holding a wedding is organizing the whole event. I've spent lavishly to show our house's power. Spend enough to make it nice. Or I don't want to spend too much on it. Um, great question. I think let's not spend too much on it for the time being. Because we haven't got much gold. Do we have access to the business, folks? If we were off of cooldown. Um, yes, we do. Because we're proud. Okay, nice. So we could get in on the business. We could try and bring in some money into the realm that way. This is going to be one hell of a wedding feast. All right, let's see what we've got then. So we've got all four of my good friends. Master Jason, Master Corman, Master Angry, and the, the fucking Septum. Get out of here. Uh, is our province converted to Faith of the Seven? No? Uh, I guess we need to kick him out then and uh, revoke that title so that someone else or, or kill him or something like that so that a new character will spawn who is in charge of running that weirwood. Um, can you just piss off? I mean, I can't plot to kill. Can't plot to kill him so, here's the weird thing. I thought that if you converted away from Faith of the Seven and you were named a knight, then you lost the knight trait. Or at least it... I, I, don't, I don't know what I kind of expected to happen there. Because um, I believed it was just religious. But hey, that's not a problem. Most of the preparations that have been made, send out the invitations. This is going to be the worst wedding ever. 
No, I don't want to join you. I think I might have to stay with that event because everybody and their mother keeps asking Glorious M and Mudge to join them. I'm not really much of a surprise. Look at that beard. Be a glorious ceremony. I did spend five gold on it after all. Can't wait. Here I stand before the heart, a heart tree of the old gods. Take up a solemn vow of mar marriage with Jane. Full stop. A lot of emphasis on that. The great lords and ladies of Seagard look upon as I drape the arms of House Mud around my bride to seal our marriage. And now for the feast. Which I didn't spend any money on. On I'm going to be honest, I didn't spend any money on anything there. Master Athelmuir has offended me. How dare he? What happens with the Citadel then if we flip that over to old gods? God knows. The feast is winding down, though. Only the bedding remains. Emmon and Jane are stripped of all the garments by the revelers and make many bawdy jokes along the way. They are finally bundled into their bedchamber, where they are finally left alone. A fine tradition. And that's what we spent the money on. High-class prostitution, everyone. The morning after the wedding feast has come, and all the lords and ladies finally make their way home. Thank you for turning up, you four random... Just the four random people we could drag off the streets who didn't feel so lonely. And he's been spending more time with his wife lately. In fact... It's been a whole day. They spent a whole day together, and he thinks he's... You know what? That's nice. That, that's, uh, they're both family people, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That's kind of cool. Okay. I mean, that, I think that just makes them like each other. More like spouse opinion plus five. Perfect. Just what we could have hoped for. Right, let's take a look at this bloody council, then, and see what we're dealing with. So, Castellan is actually very good. Fairly impressed by that. Um, a Justitia isn't fantastic, but isn't terrible, either. Now, the question is, do we have a claim on old stones? No. That doesn't make any fucking sense. We've got a claim on everything but old stones. Wait. But if we've got a claim on the kingdom of the kingdom of the rivers and the hills, don't we by default have a claim on that? Claim on the empire, and no one holds the empire, so I guess we can't push the claim. That seems a bit odd. Never mind. Maybe our bloodline will kick in and say, "Oh, by right, I should have old stones" or something like that. In the meantime, though, I think it would be fair if we start fabricating the claim, or maybe not with you because you're shit. Um, Septum. Do me a favor. I know I did say 30 seconds I was going to kill you. Just a joke, bro. Let's get you fabricating the claim. 28% chance yearly. That's looking a lot, lot better. Let's try and take as much land as possible as quickly as possible because we've got some okay provinces here. Crossfort there, the twins. Obviously very, very good. Got some really nice provinces there. Seaguard is a, is a six-holding uh, province there as well. We've got Old Stones being a five-province. Pro oh, my God. A five what now? A five holding province. We need to get all of these. We absolutely need to bring all of these together into a single duchy. We'll try and make the sea guard, I guess, our capital. We could go for the crossing as our capital duchy. Anything early on. We need to take this before the Andals do. Obviously, the north is ridiculous powerful, so those guys haven't got to worry. But nothing to say the Mountain Vale won't just immediately come down and try and grab up the Northlands or try and head through and, and make, obviously, the Kingdom of the Trident for themselves. I believe we also have some... Uh... Oh, you're first, man. You're okay, then. Yeah, Riverman. King Jared Viprin already could be a threat to our realm, so we need to be very, very careful of that. Then we need to hire a new priest, Sir Narba, who is also Faith of the Seven. You are absolutely fired. So if we got that, oh, should we expel the Andals? All provinces with Andal settlers have their Andal minority expelled, and I guess that is just within our realm, right? Control of Seabar Seaguard has been wrestled back from the Andal invaders, and so these savage foreigners can now be cast out. Leave back across the narrow sea. They are removed, giving us... Oh my god, wow, that's ridiculous. So not only do we lose the... 25% levy size and 25% tax modifier, but for the next five years, we get a minus 25% on top of that. Shit, so that's basically minus 50% if you include that which we already had. That sucks. Shit, that sucks a lot. Okay, never mind. But you can kind of see the, uh, I, I guess we're avoiding any sort of cultural. I imagine if that modifier is there for long enough, it will just flip your culture and religion to, to faith of the seven and old gods. You know what? I don't want to try it. I don't want to risk it, because we turn our back on our goddamn people, and there we go, Jane is pregnant, that actually worked out pretty goddamn well. You're an incompetent smuggler, Jane, you fucker, she's not even that incompetent, she just got unlucky, I guess. Oh, good, well, that'll go nicely, local build time, local build cost modifier increase, disease resistance increase, that'll go along nicely with my no troops and no taxes, thank you. He's having a difficult pregnant as well, that is not a good pregnant. This woman is going through a particularly hard... Oh my god, it'd be normal for her. Okay, so she's fine. It's not. I thought it would be a health malice or something like that. She's okay. We can't really afford to lose her this early on, because that would suck. You know, we're not going to find another character with Prodigy anytime soon. But at the time, I asked Septon Sethorez to spend some time with me. No, he is a filthy... Oh, he's a first man, but he's, he's a traitor then. He's a traitor along with everything else. Um, we could stop swearing him, but actually start antagonizing him instead. I was trying to build up opinion because, of course, he's on our council. We could do the opposite. We could start antagonizing him in the hopes that he tries to break the law, tries to have his murders or something, chuck him in prison, revoke his title, get a new guy in charge instead. That seems like a much better idea. Ah, a son. And we have named him after, of course, the great. He's garbage. But we named him after the great Christopher. Fortunately, he didn't come out as good as the great Christopher. In fact, he didn't inherit either strong or prodigy. Obviously, the chance would be quite low. Christopher's good. 
We need to come up with a naming scheme. All series have a good naming scheme, and this one is, of course, no different. House Mud. Um... What can we go for House Mud? I don't know enough about mud, to be honest, to commit to a mud-based naming scheme. We could have mud, soil, sediment, and then I'm immediately out of that related name. Okay, um... You guys are going to have to help me out with this, because I can't think of anything else. I'm going to have to commit to this. Young Soil. Soil Mud. Welcome aboard. We have had a son. Now, like I said, the education is vastly different to what it used to be. Well, not vastly different at all. That's not true. But we have to be a lot more careful about how we educate these kids. So as you can see there, I've added some conditions to each education trait so that you cannot pick it more than once. As it says there, that childhood focus is not already chosen, which means we can choose it. But if we pick struggle for young soil mud, other children we have then can't have struggle unless we picked every other one, at which point it will reset and it will unlock them all again. So we'd have to have eight kids if we wanted to pick struggle again and if we pick struggle for this guy. Which means that normally in CK2, you just go thrift, or at least I personally would go thrift, duty, struggle, and that's basically it. They're the only good education traits, right? But now we have to be a lot more careful. We, you know, we might want to think, hey, let's not waste thrift on soil mud. Because if we get a kid who has strong, thrift would do better for him. Or if we get a kid who has prodigy, we might want to pick, you know, we might want to pick struggle for him. Roll the dice, getting a really good martial character rather than on, on this kid who's fairly mediocre. Because he's fairly mediocre and because we have the sister, I'm going to go with juicy. Juicy is a very safe bet for a childhood education gives diligent honorable temper oh i forgot it was actually slightly better in the game of thrones because they're honorable so i'm just going to pick that for soil then is his actual education becomes a lot more relevant so we're gonna have to find a character who's obviously patient uh oh, that's a fucking great start okay uh diligent diligent craven stubborn arbitrary you know what i'm gonna find my own court tutor with blackjack and hookers because you guys are garbage so by blackjack and hookers i mean diligent and patient ideally um Anybody want to join my court? Anybody at all? Diligent, patient, proud family person. Fuck it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Welcome to court. You are officially number one educator. Best combination would obviously be, you know, genius, diligent, patient, erudite, high learning. Uh, learning is obviously a big part of the Game of Thrones education. Well, I haven't changed that. So the higher the kid's learning stat, the better his education will come out. He is the most disgraceful septum. He is because he has obviously betrayed us and converted to the false ways. Fuck. I made him like us. Oh, God. His response to my attempt to slander him have been extremely polite and reasonable. So much that it's put me in a difficult position. That's hilarious. Um, would not be appropriate for me to continue harassing him after such a kind and thoughtful response. Damn it, he's playing your hook line and sinker, man. You're, you're too slow. Oh my god, speaking of slow, we're slothful, aren't we? I'd like to get rid of that, but of course, normally you pick the you pick the what? The, the rulership focus? Uh, what gives diligent? Hunting focus gives diligent. That'd be kind of nice as well. Either of those would work. Can we join any societies this early on? There are obviously a lot of other societies along with everything else, and I'll get a full mod list down in the description. We have uh, the additional Bloodlines mod, so that gives us access to things like the skin changes, which, of course, is going to be even more relevant. It's kind of a society for the old gods, but you have to be a warg to join it. You have to have green sight or something like that to be able to join it, which we can't. And you can learn some secret powers and all sorts of stuff as well. And like I said, magic still exists in the world at this stage. It hasn't faded, so... We can potentially get access to dark powers with, uh, of course, the cold one side if we want to join that. Secretly worship the White Walkers if we want to go for the Citadel. We would be able to study magic and study for, I assume, a Valyrian link if that's even in here. Alchemist Guild, we actually have access to the rare elixir and the, uh, the rare powers as well from that. So there's a lot to see. There's a lot to see with the addition of magic in the world as well. I guess obtaining Valyrian Steel is much of an ambition these days, given that I assume every lord in Valyria has Valyrian Steel. Let's take a look around. So, obviously the Archon Vekar there has Will Fury and Valyrian Steel armor, both of which obviously count as Valyrian Steel. They're kind of cool. Uh, this guy, Golden Law, another Valyrian Steel sword. Oh my god, they all do. You can just tell. Look at the portrait. So that symbol there, simple, uh, symbol of... Fuck. So that symbol there symbolizes that they have Valyrian steel. That's, that's what it's used to represent. I assume this kid has it as well, but maybe not equipped. Oh, he actually doesn't. Wow, imagine a Valyrian lord at this point not having that. Oh my god, he's got like a Valyrian, a dragon bone seal. That's cool. Glass candles, of course, still useful. You, the power of magic is not faded there. You just need to have 12 learning and some other traits. This guy, though, literally too stupid to look at his candle. And then House Targaryen actually do exist at this stage, of course, still in Valyria. Now, in lore, they're said to be only minor dragon lords and uh, i think that's quite fairly represented there in the fact that they are just counts don't have a dukedom don't have any sort of particular political sway there they have a couple of dragons i assume do they have uh so this is long before i mean i'm just trying to think the maths then so this is what like a thousand years or so before they flee to westeros 
I don't remember. I'm trying to run the numbers on it, but I, c I can't quite figure it out. It's a long before, so, so you got to remember when Harren Hall, things like that, were built around the time. So House Hall exists. They built Harren Hall, although House Hall had been around for ages. You know, I can't do the numbers off the top of my head, but it just know that the, the House Targaryen of that, man, they have some cool. Oh, so they do a Blackfire, at least. That's cool. And then they've got a whole bunch of other shit. My god, there's so much to see. I'm really interested to see how the how the Valyrian Freehold hold up. And here's a cool little Easter egg for you. We've actually done a Gogasos playthrough, which was the sort of lost colony of Valyria in in Sothorios, which is this continent here. And there you go. You've got actually Gogasos kicking around there. Red Death is... Yeah, well, I think we all remember that, don't we? This was kind of like a slave colony, basically. But that is actually a Valyrian holding, which I thought was quite a cool little attention to detail. If you die, if you die, I will have such fury. I will have such fury, because then we'll be playing as zero-year-old soil mud, and I cannot take that. Athamir is already developing the Great Pox. Oh, that's really reassuring, Athamir. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm not sure that did anything. Oh, fuck. Don't die on me. Is there, like, a, is there an outbreak? There's no outbreak, so I don't really know what we could have. Food poisoning? This is absolute, This is 100% food poisoning. Athamir, I should be caught position, because you're a fucking idiot. We're fine. Food poisoning is not a problem at all. We are a strong man. Decent symptom treatment. He's fucked it up, but we're still a strong man. We're fine. Was that minus three, minus four? Oh my god, we actually might die. It's minus three health overall. That's, that's as bad as a pox. Please don't die on me. Don't die on me. Don't tell me about dragons. We don't care about There's so many dragons. They are not at all relevant. Oh my god, we're good. Well, that was close. Um, Let's set our ambition then to have five children. That's what I wanted to check out, whether or not it was worth even setting Valyrian Steel as our goal. Let's have five children, and let's try and get a better air. Soilmud, you're okay. What's a government type? I can let's go get gavel kind. You would give me gavel kind as well. You are a cruel man. We're playing on hard difficulty. We've got the focus changes which are made harder. We've got the education changes that are made harder. And they've sticked me with gavel kind. Unbelievable. What do we need to do? Weirwood weapon. We need money and piety. That seems fair. Okay. What do we need for this as well? Defeated an Andal invasion. No independent Andal realms exist. Oh, that's cool. I assume that's within Westeros, right? Because they... Oh, we have to control du jour Andalos. Whoa, so that's our end game goal. That's going to be so difficult to do. Not only do we have to kick the Andals out of Westeros, we have to reverse invade them and control everything in the Kingdom of Andalos. And that's the... Oh, I'm so glad they've added an end game goal to this campaign because that's made my life 10 times easier. Well then, let me know what you think. I, th I think this is going to be very cool. I, I, I kind of am looking forward to some of the roleplay changes we've got going on here. I'm looking forward to see what some of these unique mechanics do. Hopefully we can become a warg at some point and join the skin changes society. See what Valyria has to offer. Do Can we raid? I kind of forgot about that. Um, can be reformed. I guess we could reform it with raiding. I'm thinking we head over to Valyria and try and steal their shit. Um, a steal their steel because we are just still fighting with, I assume, wooden clubs and just garbage flint axes and rubbish at this stage. Okay, this is going to be, I think, fairly interesting, if nothing else. We definitely can't. Sorry, I'm just double-checking that nothing gives us access to raiding. Nope, absolutely not. Again, let me know what you think. I'm really, really excited to get to this endgame because this sounds like it could be, uh... Sounds like it could be massive, and it's going to be a long, long time before we get to anything like that. But, of course, we have access to extremely hig <laughs> speed 5 right now. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so, so getting through this, hopefully there's not going to be any moments of downtime in that case. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this this concept, this idea in, in a completely different bookmark and a completely different time of history with magic and Valyria and invasions and all sorts of tumultuous times. Did I turn off the Aztecs? Oh, God. If I haven't turned off the Aztecs, I'm probably going to turn off the Aztecs, to be honest with you. In the meantime, let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons. If you guys have any silty, soily, dirty related names, feel free to chuck them at me over Discord if you want yourselves a, a dynasty to add somewhere into the world. If you've got any inspiration for that, of course, feel free to uh, chuck those over to me as well, and I'll get those added. And a big thank you goes out to Aiden W, Alchemia, Anthony Gawley, Suna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hoffland, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Facundo Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogola, Sarik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kenny Carter, Keontae Boyd, Michael Mullen, My Name Isn't Dio, Muscratful, Napuskas Number One, Necrophil, and Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Smeg Mustaine, great name, Somnus, The Forsaken One, T-Bag Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Talek and Evacuous Packers, William Green, and Zazzy 711 for their support the Insane Tale Lovers on Patreon. Thank you guys for all going above and beyond anything I would have ever expected anybody to support at on Patreon. It's much appreciated. Big thank you to these guys for keeping the channel going. And... 
a thank you as well. A wholehearted, very large, and nice and good thank you has to go out as well to Uwu Daddy, Asro, and in person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anka, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bordoon, Ben Trope, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Tadini, Chris, Corey CA, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 7, Emerald Beam, Exploded Knees, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Grey, Hajdemar, Icarus, Icy the Great, Ida C, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, James Shea, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mastolp, Mark Priestley, Monty, Mostly Samson, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nathan Flores, Nostrus, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Payback 1 through 7, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch Billionaire, Brian Hooper, Sagatair, Sam Kears, Shari, Smurtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, The Insane Pickle, The One Ring, Valonkiri, Varagon, Voodoo Mumbo, Will Wade, Wilson Tef, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach, and Zico 2. Thank you all for your support over at Patreon. Big shout out to you guys for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, um, just generally sitting around uh, playing Crusader Kings. Obviously, thank you to Paradox and uh, thank you to God. Um, who else do people thank on speeches? Just, just thank you. Well, hey, hey, thanks.